how to read more books and better quality books. Now we know that reading sharpens your intuition. It expands your cognitive bandwidth. I see it as a competitive advantage that too few people leverage. Reading will strengthen your fast brain like nothing else, but many find it hard. By the way, I'm by no means a super reader. I used to average 25, 35 books a year. With the tips I'm gonna share, I've actually doubled that number. And with tip number seven, you can actually triple your number. But once again, it's not just about the quantity, it's also about the quality. And we're gonna increase the quantity of your books by increasing the quality of the books you read. Now, two quick disclaimers. Number one, these mostly apply to nonfiction. I tried doing this on a J.D. Salinger book or on a Charles Dickens book, it doesn't work. And the second disclaimer, I'm not gonna talk about speed reading. If you wanna know about speed reading, you can go ahead and Google it. So let's actually jump into some of these tips. Now many of these tips actually have to do with what I call book de-risking. Books are expensive in terms of time investment. There's always a big risk that you're losing time. The more you de-risk books, the more amazing experiences you'll have and the more books you'll read in general, so quantity and quality. So the first tip might be a little bit controversial, don't read the book at first. What I like to do is search the author's name on YouTube and include lecture next to their name, and I found that about 60% of the time you'll find a one hour or one and a half hour video explaining the core substance of the book. You can also do this search on podcasts. In this example, I found Safi Bakal talking about his book for about an hour. So most of the time you get a 40, 60 minute idea of what the book actually covers. The main thesis and some of the cool examples. This has allowed me to eliminate books I probably won't like or that are not a priority right now. Because let's face it, most non-fiction books can be summarized within 50 or 60 pages. The second tip, sort of similar, is to open yourself up to the world of audiobooks. An app like Audible allows you to experience a book while you're commuting, having a run, doing the dishes, or those long walks on the beach. The best part about Audible is that you can sample a book before actually buying it. So you get a four to five minute sample of the voice of the narrator and of the subject matter. Tip number three, still on audio, is to use the app Blinkist. Blinkist summarizes tons of nonfiction books, from science to technology, personal development, psychology. And then you can decide whether you buy the whole book or not. I actually end up buying a third or about a quarter of all the books I listen to on Blinkist. And one tip is to use Blinkist to listen to books you've never heard of, that you would never actually buy or even consider, really random categories. Or books that have a terrible name that really put me off. I've been pleasantly surprised many, many times. This has also really helped me to avoid books that were recommended over and over again, but that eh, just didn't feel like reading after listening to the summary. So once again, it's a tip to de-risk the quality of your reading. Since we're talking about actually reading more books, I've also got a fun fact. There are books that everyone says they've read, but they actually lie about. And top three in the UK on this is number one, Alice in Wonderland, and number three, Lord of the Rings, and number two, 1984 by George Orwell. In the world of nonfiction, I don't know what it is, but I have a feeling it's Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Slow. Okay, now for tip number four. This one's cute, but works really well for me. I would advise to pre-test a book that you can hold physically, not by reading the cover or the intro or the back cover, but by actually sampling three random pages within the book. Typically, I'd go for a page towards the beginning, one towards the middle, and one towards the end. This takes two to three minutes and it gives you a great taste for the style of the author. Would you take a bath without testing the water? Probably not. Same thing here. Tip number five, speaking of surprises, here's the three strike rule. Have you ever bought a book based on a recommendation or an amazing title, an amazing cover, and then you find that you actually struggle to read it? My suggestion is to follow the three strike rule. If after three times of wanting to enjoy a book in general, but you realize that you're not gravitating towards this specific book, you probably need to move on and to let go of a book that you're not enjoying. You don't need to finish it. Maybe you'll come back to it in a couple of weeks, couple of months, or even a couple of years. Just let it go. So this is directly linked to the next tip, tip number six. You don't need to be reading only one book at a time. I'd actually recommend to be reading two, three, or even four books at the same time. They don't even need to differ in subject matter. These are not divine items that you need to consume from beginning until end. These are actually more disposable items, here to help you. I really believe reading two to four books simultaneously will really help you increase the number of books you read, but also the pleasure you get from them. Tip number seven is also really powerful. It's called planned reading. Planned reading is a fantastic technique for books that are very functional, books that are very academic, like a book on economics, for example. It basically means that instead of reading every single chapter, you're gonna pre-select which chapters are 
interesting for you ahead of time. So you just open the table of contents and you start marking which specific chapters you want to read. And if the experience was amazing, you can always go back to the other chapters. Tip number eight, this one's a bit controversial. You don't have to follow this one. I always skip introductions to books so that I can get into the subject matter right away. And finally, tip number nine, this is a tip by Mauritz, who's a much bigger book reader than I am. His yearly average is off the charts. He actually de-risks paragraphs within the books. So he scans through the first sentence and the last sentence of the paragraph to determine whether he wants to read the whole paragraph or not. I'll definitely be trying that out in the next book I read. And like all the tips I've given you, maybe they're a fit for you and maybe they're not. So there you have it. I hope this was useful. If you want to support the channel, please share some of the tips you have in the comments below. Of course, like the video, subscribe to the channel and happy, happy reading to everyone.